Welcome back guys to Jared the Journeyman. Today we're back on the residential house that we're helping out with and I was going to go through some circuitry with you so you can better understand what it is behind the walls and how the circuitry is attached to everything. So let me get you flipped around and we'll go from there. All right guys, what we're doing is looking at a bedroom right now. And in this bedroom, we went in and we brought our home runs right here, marked them on the marked them on the stud. We brought in a 12-2. You can tell by the yellow. For all you old timers out there, when everything in NMB was white, now it's all different colors. We don't have any purple on this house. I don't know what purple means, but I did see it at the supply store. So um, don't do much residential, but now we have purple, yellow, orange for 10-3 or 10, and no telling what else they're going to come up with. So anyways, home run, 14, our home run is 12-2, and we knock it down to 14-2. For this, we were teaching the uh, students a situation where we had voltage drop in this small house we don't but we were just kind of ex uh, exposing them to the voltage drop where we'd bring our home runs with a 12 to drop it down to a 14 2 now in the panel we will put it on a 15 amp breaker but for voltage drop in this area they used to make us run 12 2 all the way but uh, things have changed so home run box 14.2 and 12.2. This is an 18 cubic inch uh, single gang nylon. So when you do your load calculation, or not load calculations, but your box fill calculations, remember you're going to have to use the 12 as the biggest conductor inside the box and not a 14 once we start doing multipliers when you start adding your devices. So keep that in mind. Everything is um, within 8 inches of the Nail on box as far as secure, brought it up, kept it center. We did a pretty good job um, securing everything. So from there, it goes up and over and then back down. And we've got to get this wall right here because it's within six feet of this closet door. See if I can zoom this out. Oh, there we go. Six feet of this closet door. Now, if we come back here, we're within six feet of this door right here with this home run box. So we go from the closet door and then we go up across. They went across this header and then they jumped right there and then came down. <clears throat> came down this exterior wall again within eight inches of the single gang nail on box. And now it's in white because we've changed to 14.2. So we've got two 14.2s in there. And then we'll pop over, go down this wall. We've got another receptacle here within eight inches of the single gang nail on box. Remember 18 cubic inches is that fill. So we've got 14.2 uh, in there. Then this is where it kind of gets tricky. We went through here and went through here, and then it looks like they, the framers always throw a little T or something when they tie a wall in. So you kind of have to fish it in. Let's see if we can see it from this side. This side, we came in, and we were able to drill a hole here. And from the back side, get our 14.2 in there, went down here, same thing, within 8 inches of the single gang nail on box, then it goes up, goes over, and then it goes to this box over here, which is actually facing into the next bedroom, so let's go in there, next bedroom over, 14.2 hits there, and now we take off, we go across. This is where we came in from over here. 
now we're coming over here and boom we hit this one there again 14.2 within eight inches we take out of there come across this exterior wall hit this receptacle drop down or go up come down hit this receptacle and now we go into this wall now this wall separates the living room from the bedroom but this is our last run in this circuit with the 14 2 and as you can tell within eight inches and we only have one 14 2 here so that was the two bedroom circuits for those of you homeowners wondering why when you turn one breaker off and two bedrooms turn off that's the reason why they're both tied together there again green dots if you guys haven't seen my video on green dots take a look i'll tag it above now let's go into this bathroom if we look at this we've got a double gang switch because of this indication right here we're going to have a vanity light and we're going to have an exhaust fan so what we did is on one of these we brought the power in the power out and two switch legs one's for the vanity light one's for the uh, exhaust fan since we had so many 14 twos we took a staple a romex staple tied a zip tie to it and then zip tied these together since we did not exceed the limitations of amount of uh, Romex underneath these staples. We don't have any under there. The staples are actually securing the tie wrap and the tie wrap securing the NMV. Everything's up to code. These are UL listed to secure. So we're using that to secure, the, the staple to secure, and then the tie wrap. And as it goes up, these guys did a pretty good job for, for some young apprentices. Now, switch leg. One takes off, and if there's not too much shine on you, what we've got right here is we've, we're waiting on a vanity height and a mirror height and how much spacing between the backsplash and the mirror. So we just kind of left some slack right in here for now so that uh, when the builder gets back to us, we can adjust the height of the vanity light plus the exact center of the vanity. Just because the plumbing's like that, that does not mean it's center. So we're still needing cabinet layout on that. Now we also have the fart fan or the exhaust fan. We've got it shot over here. And we've got it wired in. We've got a Romex connector up in there. So everything's good on that. But if we go back down and look at this. Here's your switches. Here's your receptacle that's required by code to be within 36 inches of this vanity. If you notice, we've got this in 12.2, but the lights are in 14.2. By code, this bathroom circuit on the, recept on the receptacle side has to be a 20 amp circuit, which makes sense for all you um, people out there that have usually daughters and wives that like to run the blow dryer, the curling iron, the straightener, whatever else they like to run all at the same time, you want to put it on a 20 amp circuit. But if you notice, we have this marked, but we don't have a home run here. We don't have the HR, which means that this receptacle is tied to another bathroom, which is allowable up to code. So, if we go over here into the next bathroom, I'm just let me make my way through here. This is another bathroom. Of course, we have a, a bedroom up here. I don't know if this is the master or which one this one. This almost could be the master. But we have another bathroom here. 
you look on our markings right here, we've got a 12-2 home run bathroom. And we've got two 12-2s into it. Also, if you notice here, we've got these uh, kind of scraped off or peeled off. Plus, we know this is the home run. But what this tells us right here is once we get this all stripped out and we have black, white, ground, is that the ones with the little nicks on them is the line side of our GFI. We also have to GFI protect this circuit since it's next to water. But we can, we can protect this bathroom and this, uh, the other bathroom over there on the same receptacle. So we got to know which side's your line side and what side's your load side when we go to trim this out so that the GFCI protection works properly and we're not having to troubleshoot it. Again, let's see, we've got the same setup here. We've got a switch switch, vanity light, exhaust fan. Exhaust fans up there. Again, we've got slack set in here, waiting for our heights on our vanities so we can get that done. So that's, that's pretty much the setup when you come into a residential setting on the bathrooms and the bedrooms. We tie the receptacles kind of together. You're up to eight receptacles, eight devices in New Mexico. I think it's 10 NEC. So we put those together. We'll put this bedroom all by itself. There again, there's your home run. There's your lighting. And then with our lighting, where do we bring it? We brought a 14-2, 15 amp circuit for lighting. We grabbed all of our lightings, lights to the bedroom. So we go from here, and then we jumped over to here, to this closet. Put the light above there, remember? We have to be so far away from the shelving that could be in here, so we put our, our light up here instead of our light up in the ceiling light right above the um, the header. So from this light box, we probably jumped from that to the exhaust fan, vanity light, then over here to the uh, bedroom light, which is your, you've got a ceiling fan, so you've got the light and the fan. Then we jump over here to this one, and it looks like we go somewhere. Oh, we do the same thing here. Ceiling fan, ceiling fan, and ceiling fan light. And then over here in this closet, looks like they could have got, we're gonna have to go back and restrap that. That's well within greater than eight inches. So, but this is the end of the circuit which is the single light above the, above the door there. One's a switch leg and one's a power in. Now, if you guys look at this, you notice we did not have to nick any of the, the wires like we did over there at the GFI because this is a switch. What we'll do is we'll strip it out, tie our neutrals together, which is our white, and then we'll end up with uh, an entire grounds together. But our two blacks, it doesn't matter because they're going on a switch. They're not a line in a load situation. So it doesn't matter what side of the switch we go on, as long as we get them plugged in and not to switch the neutral. So don't tie your neutral and your hot on a switch and expect it to work. It's gonna work for about 0.001 second until it trips the breaker. So, guys, that's all I got for now. Just some simple circuitry of a residential house and how things look. So, as always, be safe out there, and we'll talk soon.